Hello, everyone, and welcome to Discovery Garden's April 2018 webinar. My name is Adam Smith, and I am the Business Development Manager here at Discovery Garden. This month's topic is on search engine optimization, or SEO, as you'll see, which is the process of affecting the online visibility of a website in a web search engine's unpaid results. Islandora facilitates discovery in search engines using the Islandora XML sitemap module and on federated searches. The exposure of the Islandora objects through multiple methods makes it possible to make content available to users from locations where they are likely to originate their searches. The call is going to be recorded today, as you've just heard, uh, so if you have any audio issues at all, uh, rest assured you're going to receive a link to the uh, webinar in its entirety following today's, uh, today's event. Discovery Garden's front-end developer, Morgan Daw, joins us again today to lead us through the discussion. Uh, so welcome, Morgan. Hello there. And, now, and thank you, everybody, for joining Adam and I today. My name is Morgan Daw, and I am the senior front-end developer here at Discovery Garden. Today, I would like to talk to you about integrating SEO techniques into your online presence. SEO optimization is an involved process, so let's begin. First, a brief introduction. Search engine optimization is a process of optimizing your website so that it's best exposed to search engines, specifically to the search engine crawler, which is responsible for a search engine's ability to index and understand your website. Things like a page's title or a page's description should be available in the head of the document object model, or DOM, so that these crawlers can easily index a web page's summarized content. This way, a user performing a search will be able to isolate the most pertinent results based on index information the search engine has returned based on a user's search terms. An SEO expert is a full-time position that is always evolving and can help manage the web presence of your site and services. Properly managed, it can help to boost traffic to your site. It's more a journey than a destination, however, as getting started with search engine optimization is fairly easy but it does take time to refine your SEO implementation. Before employing a service to help with SEO tactics, I suggest reading Google's recently updated SEO starter guide as seen on this slide. Search engine optimizations has many benefits as SEO. What comes to mind right away is being ranked higher in the results set of a given search performed by any given user. This will optimize traffic flow to your websites, and in turn, doing this will inevitably improve social media sharing statistics as content is discovered by your users and shared. Furthermore, compared to other methods of online marketing, SEO is relatively cost-effective. It integrates into a user's existing web experience and has been evolving, as I said, as a field of interest steadily over the last 10 years and shows no sign of slowing down. So how does it work? Uh, the search engines like Google will store a web page's summarized content it knows of in its index. The index entry for each page describes the content and location of that page. Search engines will crawl the web looking for content by reading things like sitemaps and following links within your site, say using its main menu. This is generally done with an automated software called Crawler. To find out if your website's currently indexed on a search engine, say Google in our example, search for site colon your site name. If results are found, Google uh, has begun or completed indexing the website. Still, data is king. The most important part of a search engine optimization is your site's content. Utilizing meaningful URLs, like having keywords in the URL, for example, Maintaining keywords that represent a page and its content in the proper locations, such as a page's title or description in this content, and building or sharing links on different social media sites can all contribute to a strong web presence in terms of SEO. Our focus today is going to be on talking about taking advantage of Google Search Console. After, probably, after properly excuse me, configuring the Google Search Console, we can test if our website is indexed yet by performing a search like the one seen here. We know indexing is underway or completed if we get a result like the one we see here from this formatted search. Notice the site name and description appearing in the results set. This is metadata of an Islandora object such as its label and description populating in a Google search results set. 
Now, to refine our focus for today's discussion, we'll be talking about integration with Google's Search Console further. When you add your site to the Search Console, it may take some time before diagnostic and other data is available. This is normal as it can take some time for Search Console to gather and process data for your site. In general, if you see no data yet message when logged into the Google Search Console, it's just best to check back later. Once Google starts crawling your site more often, you'll notice that Search Console will begin to show more detailed data and that this data is updated more often. This can help identify key areas of the website that could use improvement in SEO. To begin, we must navigate to Google Webmasters dashboard as shown in this slide and submit our site's URL. There's also a good idea to add variants to this URL since Google will tend to be exact. So we should add our website with an HTTPS if it's available, for example, or strictly with a www to ensure Google is tracking our site properly. To do this, once logged into the dashboard, we'll click Add Site on the dashboard page. We can use whatever method we like to verify our ownership of our site. In the example we're running through today, I have chosen to embed a meta tag called Google-Site-Verification, which is made available to you while processing the dashboard of the newly added site. The code above is an example snippet that should be inserted into the head of the page's document. In the case of Drupal and Alandora, this can be done in any number of ways. Arguably, though, the easiest is to copy and paste the code snippet provided by Google Search Console directly into the html.tpl.php file that's found in the site's themes templates directory. If this template file doesn't exist in your theme, it's best to copy the html.tpl.php file from the base themes templates directory or create a new one with the proper naming convention and content. The Google Search Console provides a variety of methods to verify your website's ownership. As we see here, we can do this by simply uploading the HTML verification file provided by Google to the default Drupal's installation directory ensuring it is publicly accessible in the sites slash site directory. Also, an existing Google Analytics or Google Tag Manager account can be used to verify the site's ownership here if the site in question is already associated with those accounts. Alternatively, the approach we are talking here today is going to embed a verification tag directly into the Drupal site's HTML template. Now, this is an example of what the code may look like embedded into the HTML specifically the head section of the HTML template file. Later, I'll mention how we may be able to do this dynamically using a pre-process function, but I wanted to outline that it could be copy-pasted in the page template for the sake of getting it up and running relatively quickly. Now that we've verified our website's ownership, we'll need to add a sitemap to the Google Search Console to help its crawler apply searches to your content. To create one, we'll have to follow these steps. First, we'll enable Drupal's XML sitemap custom module, which is a part of the XML sitemap module found on drupal.org slash project slash XML sitemap, as well as Islandora XML sitemap. Now be sure to follow the readme of the Islandora XML sitemap module to understand better its intended usage. Navigate to the admin Islandora XML sitemap page and select Regenerate all Islandora entries. Once this is done, we can navigate to the config search XML sitemap area, select a checkbox next to your new sitemap.xml, and choose to update cached files. And then we simply click the update button. Now navigate to your Google Search Console where we were once before and add the new sitemap. Adding sitemap.xml when using this approach would work when clicking the add test sitemap button. It will take some time for the file to be indexed. Objects must be publicly accessible to be included. To make a point of this, Islandora XACML permissions do override Drupal's permissions. So be mindful that XACML restrictions are not preventing the XML sitemap from including restricted objects in your sitemap. Using this configuration, your site's sitemap would typically found at your site's uh, address slash sitemap.xml. 
Now that said, Islandor Path Auto can also be used here prior to generating the sitemap and configured to your liking so that more relevant information can be exported to the XML sitemap, such as an object's label in the URL or more uh, useful information as you see fit can be configured with Islandor Path Auto and included in your sitemap XML's export. The next step is to finalize your setup on your Google Search content account. Plenty of additional steps here, such as adding variants or selecting your target country. And we have already covered adding a sitemap here. So once this step is reached, I highly recommend reviewing the sixth section of this page to learn more about this process and working with the Search Console. It's important to complete all of these steps to help maximize your presence in the search engine. After verifying your account and adding your sitemap.xml file to the Google Search Console, you will, in time, once the site has been properly indexed, gain access to statistics such as search analytics, number of clicks from the search results page, URLs listed in the sitemap and submitted web pages. Using this data over time can help you understand how keywords and meaningful descriptions are driving users to your institutional archive. It can also help identify crawl errors Google may encounter while indexing content relevant to your website. It's found in the metadata tags on each page's header. Now, the above example is a demo I set up for this presentation, so not a lot of traffic is being reported here, but I did want to give you an example of what these might look like. Next, we'll need to add required metadata tags to an object's page as well as install and enable the meta tag and meta tag context modules. This can be used to add additional OG tag content to each page as well. The metadata context module will add a title metadata tag to the head of the page by default. However, to add a meaningful description that can be scraped and indexed, some customizations will need to be required. That said, uh, Google Scraper is still smart enough to scrape detailed information from headers, or link text that appears within the body, or additional content that appears within paragraph or span tags to construct a description or title if for some reason one isn't present. But it's always worth your time to build more meaningful titles and descriptions if you have that at your disposal. Now, it's important to include keywords as often as possible. Arguably, the most important keyword locations are the page title tag, the meta description tag, and the page heading itself. The page title tag should be no more than 65 characters in length, ideally, including spaces, and should lead with your most important keyword. Luckily, in Onondora and Drupal, this is automatically done for you by using the label of the object as the title of the page and the head of the web page. The metadata description tag should be between 150 and 170 characters, ideally, and should include your set of keywords, keywords that are applicable to the object or to the site in question or being viewed. This means an object's label and abstract description will be a great place to add additional keywords and content. It's also worth mentioning, at least briefly, the meta tag module can also be used to add open graph metadata tags. These tags are typically used with social media sites or services like Facebook, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and more. As we see here, I've added the OG image tag with width and height that provides a cached version of an object's thumbnail for use on, say, a Facebook post or in sharing an object on social media. This leverages the Islandor image cache module, and we use the page preprocess, which we are going to look at in a moment, to add custom tags to the page. Plenty of information could be added as a tag in this manner, but using the techniques outlined in these following pages, we could add any tag we wish outside of the open draft tags. Finally, in closing, I wanted to present you with the example I was referring to of adding our own metadata tags in code. <laughs> in this example, a simple preprocess function in a given themes template can create any tag we want for any given source. Now, in this example, we're creating a description tag based off an object's configured metadata description. 
This approach can be used to add any additional tags to the DOM's head. Now, description tags are important because Google will most likely use this as a source of a short description found in search results. In this example, we also see the additional tag viewport is being added to the page by the meta tag module. While this is a very rudimentary example, it does outline in one block of code how we can begin to customize the tags and data that is exposed to website scrollers, or a search engine scrollers, I should say. This is a convenient approach since it allows us to use a standard Drupal UI to configure our description source of an Islandora object, which happens to be the same as the description configured in the Islandora Solar Metadata module. Therefore, we can use the same source of description that appears on a page as would appear on a Google search results set for the sake of argument. Now, this block of code could also be used to add the verification metadata provided earlier that we discussed from Google Search Console. Uh, instead of copy and pasting the code snippet directly into the page template file, we could implement the pre-process HTML as we see here and modify the code as necessary to include the uh, verification hash instead of pasting it directly into the HTML template file. This also means we wouldn't have to copy or override any existing template files and in the long run is likely a better approach to adding custom tags for use with SEO. This brings us to our conclusion today. So I think we should open up for questions. Thank you very much, Morgan. Uh, as Morgan mentioned, uh, if anybody has a question, as always, we're going to ask that you type them in the chat window and I'll read them out loud. For those of you that have any questions following the webinar, uh, feel free to reach out to me at any point. I'm going to send some follow-up information, which is going to include uh, the slide deck that was used here today. Um, so yeah, just reach out if you have any questions at all, and we'll get back to you very quickly. I'm not seeing any questions pop up in the chat window, so with that, I guess we'll close for today. Um, you can expect to receive information on our May webinar, uh, which will be released in early May. Uh, until then, thank you very much for joining today, and on behalf of Discovery Garden, uh, we'll see you later.